Hey everybody. So this is just kind of an overview of the class, kind of show you around the website, make sure that you understand how the structure works and what everything is due, how we grade and things like that. Keep it kind of casual here. Those who don't know me, my name is Keith Watt. Nobody calls me that. I'm called Kilo by practically everybody. And it's not Mr. Kilo or Dr. Kilo. It's just Kilo. All right. Excellent. So what we're going to do, the problem with a lot of online classes is sometimes they've just got things that you're reading. And then you're trying to basically teach yourself from that. And that just doesn't work. Astronomy in particular is very difficult to learn in an online format. However, what we found is, is if you've got that live interaction in addition to the material that's here, then most people really enjoy it and they do really fine. So it's really important that you, first of all, get some study groups going, meet with your classmates, say, hey, let's all meet online at this particular time. We have some group work rooms that are going to be set up for you 24-7. So they're always going to be available for you and you can just say, hey, let's go meet in group five and, and then you can do your work from then. We also have live help hours throughout the, throughout the week, both me and my wife, Sally, who is also one of the astronomy instructors here at GCC. So we've got those available. You can come to mine, you can come to hers. I'll show you how to access those in a little bit. What a lot of students do is they'll just plan on showing up to live help and doing their homework or doing their lab during that time. That way, if they have any questions at all, they're getting instant help. If you feel like, you know, I'm going to do it on my own. That's fine. You can do that, but you are guaranteed to get stuck at some point, then you're going to have to stop. You're going to have to go get some help and then come back and work on it. So most people find that it's a lot more efficient, honestly, a lot more fun because you're able to learn it a lot more easily if you've got somebody actually there. All right. So what we're going to do, I'm going to share my screen here in just a second. I'm going to walk you through the website, kind of give you an overview, and then we'll pick it up from there. So let's get started. Okay, so this is in Canvas. I'm sure most of you have used Canvas before. If you're new to college, this is your first time you use Canvas, it's not that hard to use. Everything's gonna be organized really nice and neat for you here. All of these links over here allow you to access the pages directly, but let's start here on the home page so that you can see things. So we'll start with the uh, start here button. And then once GCC decides to load, there we go. So this is where pretty much all of your material is gonna be, and it's organized into modules showing you what we're doing each week with this. So you definitely want to take a look at the getting started. You know, we've got some information on the class here that we're going to follow, uh, where to get a calculators, things like that. These are sheets that you can download that we're going to be using throughout the semester. The lecture videos will tell you when you need them. So, you know, if you just want to print everything at once, that's fine. Or if you want to wait and do things as we go along, that's fine too. And then this will show you the structure of each week from that. We'll go over that in more detail here in just a second. Let's go back to the homepage here. One of the big things I want to show you, those group work rooms that I mentioned. So these are available 24-7. You can go into any room. Basically, these are for strictly for your class and for your group. So you can say, hey, guys, let's all meet in group four on Tuesday at 10 o'clock or whatever you decide you want to do. And then you just click on this. Now, there is one important thing that you need to know. I'm going to click on this. This is working in Google Meet which you may or may not be familiar with. It's kind of like Zoom or whatever, but Google Meet has a lot of the features that I need. For example, it does captions, it does better screen sharing and, and things like that. You can see me running twice here because I've got to run on the camera. But the important thing is, and I'm gonna move this to the side. The important thing is, is that you need to be logged in using your maricopa.edu account. And you see here by default, I'm just in my regular Gmail. So what you need to do is you come down here and you see where this one says, maricopa.edu. Click on that one so that it says your MEID at maricopa.edu and now you can actually join. So the advantage to that is you don't have to have permission to get in. If you log in with another email address, you can get access, but I have to manually approve it. Well, if it's one of your workrooms, I'm probably not going to be there. If it's live help, I should be there, but I may not actually see your alert. So it's best if you just go ahead and go in with that maricopa.edu address. So then you click join now, it'll take you into the screen here. And Google has, Google Meet has a lot of good features. Um, it's got closed captioning, which I generally use a lot because of my hearing impairment. You can see that it's, it's able to live caption everything that you do. Turn that off there. It also allows you to screen share and that's gonna be real important. So I wanna go over how we do that, but that's this button right here that says present now. You click on that, you generally wanna present your entire screen and then now this is going to cause my computer to freak out a little bit because we're going to show you know multiple images of the same thing but you click on that and click share and then it will actually share everything that's on your screen i'll be able to see exactly what's going on 
because what will be happening a lot of times is you'll be stuck in Smart Sparrow or Lab System or something like that. But the way the Lab System works, everybody has different numbers. And so just telling me kilo on, on this page, that doesn't help me. I have to see what you've got right there. So you're going to need to be able to share it with me so that I can see that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close this. And we'll leave the call there. Okay. So everything that we do um, live will be in Google Meet from that. And like I said, these are available to you guys 24-7, anytime that you want. If you click on the live help button, these are our live help hours. I'm always sitting there. You don't have to have an appointment. I will be sitting there during the whole time saying, somebody come and play with me, you know, right? So Sally's hours, we've tried to make them on opposite days. So Sally has office hours on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Mine are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. This is what we've got set for now. But you know what, guys? If none of these times work for you, I am happy to try to find another time that works. So what I want you to do is post a discussion. Say, Kilo, none of the live help hours I can do. Is there some other time? Now, it's pretty much going to have to be during the week. My oldest daughter is going off to college, so we're going to be driving to California a lot of the weekends, things like that. So I will be available uh, through the discussion boards and through email during the weekends. But in general, it's going to be really hard for me to do the live help on the weekends. But I'm happy to try to arrange these into different times if that works for you. We can also you know, possibly do some Tuesdays and Thursdays. I do have another class that I teach live from that. All right. So these work the same way. You just click on them. It'll take you straight to the Google Meet room for the live help. All right. So we're going to go back home here. The discussion boards. This is your first go-to when you need help. So when you click on that and your first assignment, you're going to have to be able to create a discussion post here. I'm going to move the video again. There we go. So all you got to do to create a discussion post, you click the discussion button right there and then give a title for what it is that you're working on. And then what is your question? Now, that's just saying, hey, I don't know how to do this. That's not helpful. Or can somebody explain how to do this? That's not helpful at all. There's no way that I can you know, type up a full lecture in a, in a discussion post. What you need to do is ask a specific question. Tell me what part you're working on. You know, What screen are you working on? What do you see? Tell me what you think the answer is, and then I'll sh and then what you think is going wrong with that. Then I can sit down and say, oh, okay, you've got a misconception here. Another important thing is that you include a screenshot so that I can see those numbers. The easiest way to do that, almost all of the computers that are out there have a button marked print screen. So all you need to do is hit print screen, and it will copy the entire contents of your screen to the copy-paste buffer. Then you just click in here and hit Control-V. Hold down the Control button and press V. And it will paste everything straight into that discussion post, just like that. So that's the easiest way to do it. That way, you won't really even have to think about it a whole lot. If, for some reason, that's not working for you, you can take a picture with your cell phone and upload it as an attachment. But it, one, it won't show up just in the message. And two, it, so it'll open up in a different screen. But two, it's also a lot of steps to get it in there. So it's a little bit tedious. So the easiest thing is to just hit that print screen button, Control V for paste and it'll paste it right in there so that you've got it available, okay? All right, so that's how we do discussion posts. Now, you should use discussion posts first before you try to email me directly. Um, the reason for that is, is if, if you have a question, chances are 10 other people in the class have the same question with that. And so if you email me a question about the class, I'll probably reply to you and just say, hey, can you copy this into a discussion post and I'll reply to you there. I'm probably not gonna answer it directly over email. If you have something personal or something about the class or something that you just don't want to announce to everybody, by all means, send me an email. That's perfectly fine. But put it in that discussion post, and that way everybody can come get the help. If you're reading a discussion post and you know the answer, answer it. Go for it. You know, Show them how smart you are with that. That way we can start building this library of help so that people can go and get the help as quickly as possible from it. All right, I'm going to cancel this. All right, so the last thing here is resources. The astronomy resources page has a bunch of, like I said, these are the documents that you're going to be downloading. Also, it has an online scientific calculator. Now, I don't like this one very much, but it's the only one that I've found that's even halfway decent. But you're in college, you need a calculator. So they cost about 15 bucks. Don't get one of those fancy schmancy graphing calculators that nobody knows how to use anyway. The big thing that it has to have is it's got to have a scientific notation button. So if you don't remember scientific notation, that's like 5 times 10 to the third. That's 5,000. So you 
have to be able to put that in. The button will be either EE or EXP or something like that. It might be X10X. If you're buying one, please don't get one that has an X10X button. Half of them don't work very well. Uh, the other half are pretty tedious to use. So make sure that it's got either the EE or the EXP button. If you're not sure, just get on live help. Say, Kilo, will this one work? And I'll let you know. You know, and if you happen to be, you know, in Walgreens or whatever, or Walmart, and it happens to be a live help thing, get in on your phone and show it to me. I'm glad to help you with that. That's not a problem. If you just can't get one, this is an okay substitute, but it's not very good. You press okay to get started right here. And then for this one, it's got that X10X button. I don't like it. You'll see how this works. But you press 5, X10X, 3. So instead of writing 5E3 or 5 with O3 up in the top, which is how it should be, it actually spells it out like here. But now the cursor's up at the top. So you have to hit this right cursor button to get down to where you can do you know, the actual math with it. So it's a lot of keystrokes. The one thing you never, ever, ever will do is type in 5 times 10 raised to the power of 3. That will give you the right answer if you multiply. The first time you divide, it gives you the wrong answer, and that sucks. Because you'll be sitting here trying to do your homework, and you'll be going, Kilo, I know it's right. I know what I'm doing. Why is Smart Spiral telling me I'm wrong? Well, you're putting in your calculator wrong, so you are wrong with that. So get a calculator that's got an EE button or an EXP button, and it'll save you all kinds of trouble. The other thing I really recommend is that you use my, you use Excel or Google Sheets. Um, if you don't like spreadsheets, if you're like, oh, no, spreadsheets are from the devil, come see me. Give me 10 minutes, and I'll show you how to turn that thing into your slave with that. I have had students, once they've learned how to set up a spreadsheet to do their homework, they go, this feels like I'm cheating. Well, you know, that's okay, because you're in college now. You're not in high school anymore. So it's not necessary for you to do brute force and do it all in paper and pencil and a calculator and show your work and all this other sort of thing. Having it in the real world, we use a spreadsheet. And so it makes your homework go 10 times faster. In particular, in this class, your goal is to find an alien world. You're going to be honestly looking for aliens. By the time you finish this class, you will be able to do exactly this for real. You'll be able to sit down at the GCC North Observatory and find aliens. Well, as you might expect, there's a lot of calculations that lead into identifying, hey, this is a habitable alien world. Yeah, you can do it on your calculator. But I'm going to show you the, the I'm going to keep talking about the final project here in just a minute, but you're going to have 500 stars that you're going to look at. Do you really want to do an analysis on 500 stars? Or would you rather just have it set up in your spreadsheet where you type in a few numbers and it does all the work for you? Believe me, it's worthwhile. So come by Live Help. I'll show you how to get that set up. It's actually not hard at all. And then it's a skill that you can actually put on your resume after that. All right, so let's go back here. So we're going to go into the modules. Do definitely go through all of this material right here so that you can see what's going on, get an overview of what's, what's going on with the class. Each week, however, is going to be organized the same way. There'll be two lectures. They'll be organized around two lecture videos. And then there'll be a homework sheet with each one of those. And then you'll have a lab. So let's take this first week is a little bit different because you're only going to have one actual lecture where it says live help, live class here. That's going to be this video. So this structure from Canvas here is from when we were actually teaching it uh, live online. So each one of these will be replaced with a YouTube video that I'm going to be making. It'll be the same format that you're looking at right now. So it's not going to be, you know, looking at this guy at a distance writing on a whiteboard or something like that. I try to keep it a lot more interactive with that. So for this week, you're going to have an astronomy knowledge pretest. That's a quiz that's going to be in Canvas. You're, I just want to see what kind of astronomy you know already. You're not expected to get any of them right, but do your very best. Once everybody has taken the quiz and I've downloaded the data, I'm going to give you 10 points just for doing the quiz. So your grade's going to be set to 10 points for that. So go ahead and do it. Give it your best shot. The syllabus acknowledgement, this is also a quiz, but it's a single question saying, I read the syllabus. So read the syllabus. It'll have one answer, yes or no. By the way, the correct answer is yes. And then you'll get your one point. So make sure that you're reading that syllabus. So let's click on this. Now, I'm not going to read this to you because if you don't know how to read, you are probably in the long line of work here. But there are no required textbooks. There's no actual books. Everything you're going to be able to download directly from Canvas here. The only thing that you are going to need to buy is Smart Sparrow. That's our simulator. So all of your labs and then all of your assessments, your exam questions, are going to be done in Smart Sparrow. So you're going to need to buy that access code. 
Now, Smart Sparrow gives you generally one to two weeks of trial free so that, you know, if you're waiting for financial aid, so once that trial runs out, you will need to go ahead and get the code, as I said. So it'll cost you about $40 or so. You can get it from the bookstore, but it's actually quite a bit more expensive. So unless you have to use financial aid, well, then you're definitely going to want to go through the bookstore. But other than that, you're probably going to want to actually purchase it directly from Smart Sparrow. Whichever way you do it, you need to access Smart Sparrow through Canvas. This is very, very important. You can't go to the Smart Sparrow site and bookmark that and then run out of that. Because what's happening is, is that it's sending your Canvas ID to the Smart Sparrow simulation system, and then it sends your grade back to Canvas. So it won't actually let you connect without having to go through Canvas from that. So the easiest thing to do at some point, it's going to say, hey, you need to buy a code if you want to keep doing this, then just buy it right there, type it in. So you've got a week or so if you're you know, waiting for your financial aid to come in or something like that, you're still going to be fine. You can still access the system, but eventually you're going to need that. So you're going to want to put that money aside so that you don't get stuck without being able to get access to the materials. All right. Uh, let me go back to my syllabus here. Okay. So that's Smart Sparrow. Um, we talked about the calculators. Uh, for your grading, there are four parts to your grade. Your practice worksheets, these are your homework. So when you're doing the, the each week's lesson, there will be some class notes. That's the front and back of one page. That's not going to be graded. That's for your use. It's not just notes, though. Those are also activities that we're going to be doing. And I'll show you more about that as the time comes. But they work with the videos. So there'll be times in the video when they're going to say, OK, stop the video, go ahead, do this, and then come back. You need to stop the video. If you're just blasting on through, you're actually not going to learn the material, and then you're going to be struggling. So it is really important that you pause and you do it there. Ideally, do it with your group. Everybody meet in one of the group rooms and watch the video together while this is going on. Then you can actually talk about it and work on it. That's going to be the way for you to get through this most easily with that. The homework, on the other hand, is just the front side of one page. So class notes are always front and back. Homework is always just the front side. That's how you can tell the difference. The front side, the homework is graded for accuracy. So you need to make sure that you're getting it right before you submit it. Ideally, you should print that out and then write it out you know, with a pencil or what, with a pencil or pen or something, and then take a cell phone picture of it, and there'll be a place for you to upload it to the website. I grade those manually. You'll see your grades come up on Monday after I've gone through and, and graded everybody in the class's work for that. So that's when you'll see that submitted. If you don't have any way to print it out, you don't have access to a printer, you can download the file and type on the file itself. That's a little bit difficult because sometimes you're going to be actually drawing things. But if you use a drawing program, you know, it'll load into pretty much anything, Microsoft Paint even works, then you can do it that way. But it's a little bit tedious. It's a lot easier to do if you just got it on pencil from that. What some students will do is they'll just print out the whole thing at once. With your class, I'm going to be working on the videos as we're going. So I will try to stay, you know, a week or two ahead so that you can maybe download three or four of them at a time and print them out from that. Okay. All right. Your assessments, that's what we used to call our exam questions. The assessments, you're going to have one each week. It's going to be in Smart Sparrow. Now, the way these assessments work, it's going to be, you know, just a few screens. You expect it to take you maybe half an hour or so. But for every wrong answer, you're losing points. And they're not quiz questions. It's more do something. You know, it could be related to the lab. It could be related to the stuff that we did in lecture. It could be related to your homework problems, things like that. But it's going to be do something. It may be, you know, find the temperature of this star. Or it may be what kind of metabolism would this alien use? Things like that. So it's going to take some time. But the key is, is that it won't let you go on until you get it right. So what happens is, invariably, you're going to get stuck at some point. If you've tried twice, stop. On that third try, go get some help. Because you're losing points every time. You could, If you just keep going and keep guessing and keep trying things, then you may finally get to the end and you've got zero points for it. You've got zero out of 10. So what you want to do is if you've, if you've tried more than twice, stop. Come into live help, post on the discussion boards, something so that we can sit here and we can get you going because you're just getting frustrated and you're not learning anything at that point anyway. So don't waste your time. Just stop. That way we don't you know, bang your head on the keyboard, get blood all over your keyboard, and then it's all messy. We don't want any of that stuff. So come get the help for that. Now, once you get all the way to the end, you have an option of actually redoing it. And now, of course, you know all the answers. 
So there's no reason why you shouldn't get 10 out of 10. And so what it's going to report to Canvas is the average of all of your attempts. So let's say that you get through it and you just totally screwed up and you got five out of 10. That's just terrible. 50% on an exam is not good. So fine, do it again. But this time you got 10 out of 10. So now instead of five out of 10, you've got seven and a half out of 10. Don't like that? Do it again. Maybe you get another 10 out of 10. Now you've got a little bit over eight. And you can keep going and get your grade as high as you want. You'll never get to 10 because that's mathematically impossible, but you can get you know fairly close. So there's no reason why you can't do really well on that if you've got the time and you go through it. And you may say, well, Kilo, isn't that kind of a waste of time? That's a little weird that you're willing to just let us do it again when we know the answers. Well, there's been a lot of studies that have shown that the more times you interact with the material, the more likely you are to learn and understand it. So it is worth it to me for you to interact with the material more times, and then I'll give you the points for doing that. And if you think about it, it's not that different from when you were in high school and your teacher gave you back your exams and said, okay, if you do corrections, I'll give you half your points back. This is even better than that because you can keep redoing it and get as many points back as you want from that. All right. So I found that works out really well. But the key thing though is once you get, once you've tried twice, stop. You've got something that you don't understand or something that you're, you know, you're putting into your calculator wrong or something like that. There's really no point in going on. You're just going to get frustrated and angry. Don't do it. Come get help. That's what I'm here for. All right. So final project, I'll talk about that in just a second. Your laboratories, you're going to have one lab each week. It's also going to be in Smart Sparrow. It's going to be a lot longer. It's going to take you about two hours for each one to do. Our normal in-person labs are two and a half hours. This is going to be just a little bit less than that. Some of them you'll be able to get through in an hour maybe. Um, but you should allow yourself two hours. Just like the assessments, you're not going to be able to go forward until you've actually got it right. It won't let you go on until you actually understand the material. That's the point. That's what you're trying to learn here. On the other hand, you don't lose points for wrong answers. So if you get all the way to the end of the lab, you're going to get 10 out of 10. So as long as you're allowing yourself time to get it done, there's no reason why you shouldn't get 10 out of 10 on all of your labs. In fact, what I strongly recommend you do is pick one of the live help times. Log on, log on on the live help, and then just say, okay, Kilo, I'm here. I'm going to work on my lab. And if I need any help, can you help me? And I'll say, sure. And maybe you don't need any help at all. Maybe you'll just sit there and you'll just keep working. And that's perfectly okay. But then if you get stuck, you can say, um, Kilo, I don't understand this part. It says that I'm doing it wrong. You can share your screen and I can say, oh, look, you need to do this, this, or this, and you can move on. I have found that my online only students do best when they're at least coming once a week to live help. Even if I have one student who did nothing more than just check her homework, and she usually had it right. But this way she felt confident about what she was doing and the class got easier and easier and easier. Because what's happening with this class, you've probably taken some classes where all the easy stuff is at the beginning, and then it gets harder and harder and harder as you move on. This class is not like that. The easy stuff is at the end. The hard stuff is at the beginning. Once you've learned those tools, I'm going to teach you how to apply those tools to finding actual aliens. And that's fun. That's cool. But only if you understand the stuff that we've done before. So you really want to work in this first third of the class or so, so that you've really got a good handle on these tools because after that, the class is fun. If you are struggling learning the new, the application, when you're still trying to struggle to learn the tools themselves, you're going to be hating life for most of the time. So really get with it initially, and you're going to find that's going to work a lot better for you. All right, so with the final project, there is no final, final exam in this class. I know, yay, much rejoicing. Instead, you've got a final project. So I talked about this earlier, but your final project, you're going to be, it's going to be in Smart Sparrow, but you're going to be given a star field with 500 stars. Around one of those stars is a habitable alien world. Find it. That's your exam. Now, as you might expect, there's a lot that's going to go into that. It's going to require to use literally everything that you've learned in class. But you will be able to, by the time you finish this class, you will be able to sit down at a telescope at the GCC North Observatory and find an alien world. And prior to the pandemic, when we were actually able to be at the telescope, GCC students were the first community college in the world, first community college students in the world to actually observe an alien planet going around its star. So you'll be able to do this for real by the time we're done. Okay. The final project will take you, you've got two weeks to work on it. It will probably take you two weeks to get it done. And as I mentioned, it will go a lot faster if you've got everything set up in a spreadsheet and you've been building that spreadsheet. 
as you go on. But generally speaking, you should probably consider that it's going to take you the whole two weeks. I'm a professional astronomer. I do this for a living. It took me 10 hours to do the project with me just blasting straight through it at warp speed. So you can't expect that it's that you're going to be able to just do this the weekend before it's due. That's pretty much the way most, if you fail the class, that's usually is that you didn't allow yourself time to do the final because it's 25% of your grade right there. If you don't do your final, you've dropped the best you can get is a C if you've got a perfect score on everything else and you won't. So make sure that you're, when the time comes, you're ready to go and you've got everything set up. Okay. All right. So the rest of this stuff, I'm not going to read to you. You should definitely read through it so that you've kind of got an idea of what's going on. All right. Let's go back to the homepage and let's look at the modules and then... I think we'll be able to be done. So each week, it's going to have the same basic format. Uh, there'll be two of these lessons. This week is a little bit different because we've got this intro here. Um, but if we look at week two, for example, you'll have a lesson on the Drake equation and one on using the calculator. And then each week, there'll be class notes. That's that front and back page that I mentioned. There'll be a PowerPoint that is the actual PowerPoint that's used in the video. Uh, the way I do PowerPoints, there's not a lot of words on them. It's mostly pictures and diagrams and, you know, animations and things like that. So just looking at the PowerPoint is not going to help you a whole lot. But some students find that it's useful to have it. They'll like take notes on it to get extra work with it. That's perfectly fine. It's up there for your use. The Right now, this link is pointing to the live class that we had last year. This is going to be the name of the lecture video. It's going to be up on YouTube, so you can stream it straight from that. This is your where you'll get your practice worksheet. This is where you'll get your homework. So you'll be able to download that directly from here. That's what I recommend. And then you can print it out, fill it out, and then take a screenshot of it and put it and upload it back into, let me go back to that slot, right here. Yeah, if I can get it, find it, there it is. So for example, right here is your homework submission. And this is where you can upload it. And it can be in any one of these file formats you've got right here. This is the grading rubric. This is what I'm actually going to use to grading to grade you. There's no secrets here. You'll know exactly what it is that I'm looking for. Okay. All right. So just with this week, there is the astronomy pretest. Again, as I mentioned, you're just going to try to give it your best shot. You'll get 10 out of 10 points just for doing it. But you're going to see that later on in the semester. You're going to see that astronomy. It's going to be called a post test at that point. At that point, you should actually know the answers. So Try to, you know, challenge yourself. See what you can get with that, and then we'll see how you do later on. The syllabus acknowledgement, as I said, the correct answer is yes, so make sure that you're following along with that. Now, for your other assignment for this week is a discussion post. I want you to use the discussion board like we talked about. This is everything that you should have in your post. You're going to score two points. You need to both make a post and reply. So in addition to what we have here, I want you to post two things that are true about you and one that's a lie. Then in a reply, I want you to go to another student and see if you can figure out which one is a lie. I'll start that off. I'll give you two truths and a lie for me, and then you see if you can figure out which one is actually a lie. Okay, It's a lot of fun, but it'll teach you how to use the discussion points. All right. The laboratory is here. Uh, the Smart Sparrow links aren't currently active. Um, Smart Sparrow is not, is, won't be starting up until next week, but these links will take you directly into Smart Sparrow. And this is what I was saying. This is where you need to access Smart Sparrow to do your laboratory from that. If it's best if you do it all in one sitting, but you know if you need to leave it and come back to it, you can do that. It saves where you left off and you can just pick up right there. This is where your assessment will go. I do not recommend doing your assessment until you have done everything else during the whole week. Remember, you're losing points for every wrong answer with this. You don't want to start that until you've actually got a good handle on everything else with that. All right, and that is it. If you need any help reviewing any of this stuff, you know, or if you've got questions about it, pop into live help. Glad to help you out right there. Okay, so that's it for this one. I do want everybody to come by live help this week at least once. Try to show up at the beginning of the of the time slot so that, you know, I can answer any questions, make you feel more comfortable, you know, and we kind of get to know each other a little bit better. What I don't want is for you to feel like you're just doing this class by yourself. Uh, that is going to be really hard for you it's going to be hard for you to be successful. On the other hand, you know, if you're working with a real person, be it with your own group or with me, you're going to find that the class is going to be a lot of fun. I mean, it's aliens, right? Okay, so we will see you guys later on during the week, and let me know if you have any problems. We'll see you then.